<laughs> Yo, people, what's going on? Back again with another episode of Footy Talk. Matisse, what are you saying, bro? All good, man. All good. Do you know what I mean, just watching the Italians digest their meals live in front of our eyes with these performances, man. They're not playing about. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, bruv, they're moving sturdy, bro. Efficient, <laughs> bro. Proper. They're moving proper. Can't mm. even lie, bro. Like they're moving mad, bro. Best team to watch in the tournament so far, without a doubt, bro. Like defensively, ten out of ten. Mm. The attacking leaves a bit to be desired, but the just the constant pressure that they're putting on teams, yeah. Like sooner or later, they're just wearing man down. Yeah, it's that That's midfield as well. Is. That midfield controls everything. Like variety, no variety. You know, Barella, Locatelli, Jorginho. Just the options are crazy. So that that midfield is just dictating and controlling everything. And then when you've got an elite midfield like that. That's the yep. epicenter of the football pitch. If you've got that area on lock and then you've got Benucci and Chiellini, I mean, Chiellini had to come off, you know what I mean, with, with, a, with, a, with a hamstring or whatever he had there. But they, you know, Italian bread and butter for defending that, that country. They already were producing defenders, no problem. So, yeah, I mean, they're looking good, man. They're looking good. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a good time. They're only really missing that world-class like Immobile is a good striker. I wouldn't say he's world class, but he's a good striker. If they had like a world class centre forward, like a yeah. Erling Haaland level, it would be peak for everybody. From <laughs> no, it it's true, peak. it's true. But if anyone had Erling Haaland, it would be peak for anyone, bro. He's mm. a top, top, top baller in it. At the end of the day, but I think Italy, you're right. I think against the top sides, I think their lack of attacking prowess might be the reason why. Do you know what I'm saying? Might be the reason why they don't go all the way. Mm, mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's just one of them ones. We just have to see um, who they come up against and what they do. I think the same goes for like Spain. Spain are dead, bruv. Bear mm. man, we're giving Spain a chance. Spain, Spain are just passing for the sake of it. Their attack is so blunt. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And it's like they're not good enough defensively to get away with the fact that they're not super potent going forward. So it's good kind of seeing how these teams are balancing and matching up at the yeah. moment, man. Do you know what I mean? And big up everyone here also. Yeah, we're live on Twitch only, bruv, because YouTube's Matt. pissing man off, bro. You know <laughs> them ones. I'm not going to lie. Um, obviously, the, the Copa America thing, they wrongly um, copyrighted one of my watch-alongs. And then you, you get put on like a 90-day flipping probation or something ban where you can't live stream obviously i've appealed it and i i emailed youtube but bruv if they don't overturn it boy in 90 days time bro they might not see me again blood because i've got my tick on twitch man's doing bits on twitch i'm doing mad numbers over here so it's one of them ones if they don't pattern it up then bruv they, they'll just lose me completely blood it's just one of them ones it mm. is what it is because i'm not waiting 90 days to stream again it's a piss take i've done over oh, I've done I've done thousands of watch alongs and I've never is broken any one? rules. Yeah. yeah, I've done thousands of watch alongs, never broken a single rule. Mm. And someone's wrongly um sent a copyright thing on my channel for a Copper America watch along, bro. Nah, it's not my business, bro. They need to overturn that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and if they don't overturn YouTube, it in the I'm 90 days, yeah. then bruv, it's fine. I'll be here, bro. Because man's doing mm. numbers over here, you mm. know, like that. So is what it is. I got my tick yesterday, verified on Twitch. Mm. I was on the front page of Twitch yesterday. I was on the front yeah. page two days ago. You know what I mean? And boy, like... It's hey, calm over on Twitch. It's calm. La it's calm life's here, good yeah. over here, bro. And they actually send out notifications, unlike YouTube. Do you know what I mean? So it is what it is. How's man getting three, two, two, three, four thousand people watching my streams, blood, when I've only got 6K, bro? It shows that these men ain't sending out the notifications on YouTube. That's what yeah, it shows yeah. you. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So... But then, man, I get more people watching me after the stream. So I might as well just upload the video after, mm, you know, yeah. like that. So yeah. that's what I'll be doing more than likely. If they don't redo it, I'm going to do my shows live on Twitch and then I'm going to upload them on YouTube after, bro. And I'll just get the residual income from there. It is what it is, bro. They yeah. you can't you can't keep a good man down, mate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It is, it is what it is, bro. YouTube Twitch been moving after mad me, for a while. Jeremy. You know, been like been that. Moving mad for a while. So Maury mm. announced... Like we kind of knew it was happening, innit? It's, it's, it's like the worst kept secret, bruv. Would you make her that, bruv? 
listen, this is all down to what happened with Tomori under Frank Lampard. He didn't get no no game time at all um, in yeah. the second in the second season. First season, he was getting a look in, um, rotated evenly enough um, until really the second part of the season. He was phased out for Rudiger quite ruthlessly, despite having a good start to the season. I and mean, we never really yeah. seen him again. Never seen him again. Didn't see him, you know, at the early part of this season. And you know, of a, a player of his of his potential and quality, he doesn't need to be fifth choice at Chelsea under any circumstances. He needs to at least be um, in the reckoning for for game time. So he went on loan to AC Milan, and and for some reason, we put the lowest buyout or option option to buy you could possibly wish for for a player of this talent. English yeah. tax also, do you know what I mean? And not that English tax means anything to AC Milan, but brother's young got potential and they put a 28.5 million option to buy on him. I was like, this is, this is, this is that was very it's, strange, isn't it? Like, did they like and Lampard fall out or something? Because all this talk of Lampard was supposed to be, um, he was supposed to be playing the youth and all of these mm. things. And yeah, he just didn't rate man. And I just don't understand it because I, I don't get it. He's a very good footballer. He won Player of the Year under Lampard at Derby in his first in his first season when Lampard was in charge of with Jody there at Derby. Um, so he got Player of the Year there. Then he brought him in to Chelsea's first team and um, sold David Luiz to Arsenal that summer. So you would have thought yeah. loads of loads of trust and belief had been built up there. And then right. it just went off the rails. And I have absolutely no idea why it went off the rails. It doesn't make any sense to me. But mm. Tomori is not a type of player that you know what I mean can be sitting not even sometimes in the squad. It's just, it's, it's criminal. And it's a robbery that we've even put that option to buy in there for that low. It, sh it should be minimum for, for his age and his potential minimum 40 million. If Ben White getting rejected 45 million from Arsenal, whatever it is, Brighton. Yeah. It's gotta be, it's gotta be 40 million, at least 35 million for Tomori minimum um, for me to even be accepting that. So yeah, I just think we've, we've been robbed there in that, in, in that situation. It's a shame because I wanted to see him under Thomas Tuchel if possible, but yeah. we've got the Cobham conveyor belt, as I call it. We've got so many players coming through. Not all of them are going to make it. Tyrek Lamptey is another example. That's at Brighton. has been linked with Tottenham, I think, recently um, as well. We've just got too many young players to, to to keep. It's not possible. So I just wish him all the best, man. He's going to do very well in Italy. Um, he should have been in the England squad for me, but it's where it is. Oh, 100% he should have been in the England squad. And he's different gravy, bro. He's such a baller. Mm. And from what I've seen, he doesn't look to have a a bad attitude or like a bad work ethic. So the fact that he didn't work out with Lampard is a bit strange for me because yeah. you've seen at Arsenal when things aren't going well for the manager, it's actually been the young players that have kind of dug him out. Do you know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. um, why he didn't get more game time is a bit mad. And also why it got to the point where he didn't want to come back, bro, even after seeing you man win the Champions League. So mm. That makes me think that something, something weird's gone on, bruv. Do you know what I mean? Because after seeing the team win the Champions League, if someone says to you, you know what, the door's open, surely mm. you go back. I think there's just too... we just got too many centre-backs on our books. Um, but, but you I play must three say, of them. We play three of them. And also, Rudiger's contract's expiring at the end of next season. Christiansen's yeah. contract is the same. And that's for Laquetta, but I haven't really got any worries about him, him renewing as well. But he's also expiring as well. So we're not, you know, we're not airtight in that situation there's a few little things that we need to sort out behind the scenes in terms of new contracts but in terms of in terms of Tomori I, I'm kind of it was a 50 50 for me whether he would come back but I just think when you're settled and you've again he he's probably thinking to himself I've got a lovely you know historic big club in AC Milan who are playing Champions League football they believe in me they're playing me week in week out you know, they, I think their captain, um, Ruman Goli, came out of the team for him um, in the end. So he he dispatched of him. So when you when you've got something good, why why even bother coming back into Chelsea and trying to break into this this eleven? Especially when Chelsea's defense is so good at the moment as well. Um, so I think yeah, I think he just said, listen, I'm just going to go over there, do my thing, and um, you man will just have to either be better or regret it. But it's a shame. It's a shame because he's a very good player. So he's saying that he thought that maybe Milan wouldn't pay the 28 million. Do you think that's what it was? If they honestly thought Milan wouldn't pay 28 million for Tomori, then either they've undervalued Tomori or they've underestimated AC Milan. I don't know what's going on here, but there's yeah. no way in hell. Like, if if Milan didn't make Champions League football, then maybe they wouldn't have because financially they might not have been able to handle it. Inter Milan yeah. having their own struggles as well and they, they won the league, for God's sake. But at the end of the day, the end of the day, 28 million for Tomori is a steal. 
absolute oh, 100 bro. steal and, in this market. And the thing is, yeah, if it was a British club coming in for him, he would have cost more than that. So 100%. it's funny that the British tax hasn't kicked in for this transfer. It's weird, isn't it? It's bro, it's, weird, it's, bro. Marina is usually brilliant with this stuff. Like in terms of outgoing, yeah. she got 60 million from Oscar. Um, she, she's usually very good at getting good money for our players, but this one is a massive L, huge L. Should have got double. Do you know what I mean? Should have got 40, 40 M's minimum. Just um, yeah, we've, yeah, we've definitely fumbled the bag on this one. So, you know, we have to take the L. But we've got we still got some young defenders coming up through the ranks. Mark Gay, he had a really, really good season at Swansea. Um, really good season. He's another player, ball playing center back. Um, same kind of height as well. Very strong, very, um, very good in 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 the air. So I'm I'm as long as he comes through, hopefully he gets an opportunity, then that will kind of fill the void. But yeah, it's a madness. But how much did Rian Brewster go for? Like 25 or something like that. <laughs> Bro, Solanke as well. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Solanke was like 20 mil, Brewster was like 20 something mil as well. Yeah, but that's what um, I mean. So for my man to go for that is Criminal. Bro, like, hey, Milan have got the, hey, that, that, that's one of the bargains of the season, bro, because he's so Facts. young as well. There's resale value. If they sell him, he's going to go for more than that. Yeah, he's like, what, 22, 20, 22, 23, max. Yeah, he's young as hell. Like, it's proper resale value in that. And just, even if they didn't sell him, do you know I mean, he's going to be, he can he can be a staple, staple in that defence for, for, for a decade. So they've done brilliant business there. Very, very intelligent buy from, from Milan. Very. Absolutely. And... Obviously, we can't not talk about it. Sergio mm. Ramos, bro. Like, he's come out and he's basically said he's not renewing. He's going to leave on a free. Bare mm. speculation about where he's going to end up. Someone saying that Man City are interested, that he's had an offer from one Premier League club. One of the guys in the chat yesterday was saying that he's going to go to Seville. He's going to go back no, home, apparently. He's already ruled that out um, for Britsia. He won't go to Seville, I don't think. That's what I thought. I thought he's not staying in Spain. Yeah, They're saying that Seville offered out. him a five-year deal or something like that. No, Do you know what I'm being, saying? Yeah. Like, being, where is he out. going, bro? Like, he can only be going PSG. Like, like I PSG. thought PSG as well. Yeah, that was my initial initial. Because um, where I've else would he go, bro? Talk. Man are saying that City are front runners for, runners for Sergio Ramos, but... Really? Does it make sense? With I mean, really, they've got Laporte. I mean, Laporte is injury prone, so I don't know what's going on with that situation. But they've got Diaz. Stones has, has had a resurgence as well to bring Ramos into that. I mean, Ramos from an age pro profile perspective, you could say you're going to bring in some experience because you know Diaz is still very young. Stones yeah. is not you know too aged, so you could bring in a, an experienced head to just guide everybody and and really airtight the situation. But Man City. Pff, bringing in Sergio Ramos, Pep. I don't know how Pep and, and Ramos are in terms of their relationship, you know, because Ramos is quite a Ramos is quite a big character. Do you know what I mean? He's a very big character to deal with in your dressing room. So and he's a Man big City Madrid does, guy yeah, and yeah. Pep's master. Like, so yeah. And, and, like... and Enrique is manager of Spain and he didn't even bring Ramos. So you can already mm. feel that, that Barca of Madrid vibe there. And the thing is as well, Man City don't tend to go for these outspoken, outlandish names in terms of not yeah. stature, but I'm talking about being a, a massive talker. You know, you got a lot to say, a lot of influence. You look at who Man City had, they've been pretty humble youths. Do you know what I mean? Like, they, they don't yeah. really have anybody that eclipses Pep in terms of in terms of speaking out. And and Ramos is he's won enough to be like to, to at least you know butt heads uh, if he wants to. So uh, there's been rumors because I mentioned it on, on my show previously as well. People have been saying that you know there was some sometimes when they've been falling out at Real Madrid. Ramos has been one of those guys behind the scenes that can kind of create cults in dressing rooms and whatnot. I don't know if that's true, but he is mm -hmm. a big character. I think PSG, he's got written PSG all over it, you know, written, written all over it because they, they lost Thiago Silva last summer, didn't really replace him. Marquinhos is obviously world class as well, Kimpembe, but you know, you could, you could bring in a Ramos in that setup. And they bring, bring PSG have been bringing in free transfers for fun. You only have yeah. to look at Donnarumma coming in, um, Wijnaldum coming in. So yeah, that, that's what suits it in my opinion. That's what it looks like. And this is it. Sergio Ramos has basically said that it wasn't a money issue and he wanted a two year deal and he was only offered one. So it he's basically saying he was he was forced out of the club and he didn't want to leave. Interesting move from them. <laughs> and, and and that's what he said. And he said I accepted a one year offer at the last minute, yeah, but the club informed me that the offer was no longer on the table. So that tells me also that Real Madrid mm -hmm. have made plans beyond Sergio Ramos. So all of these fake news about Man United, yeah, bidding for 
Rafa Varane and all this shit, yeah? Rafa Varane ain't available, bro. I don't think he is, yeah. Especially He's with... He's not available, um, bro. Do you think that's Sergio there, Ramos is going to leave? And, and they're going to let Varane leave as well when they've just got a new manager coming in trying to rebuild. Are you mad, bro? They're man mm. are using Manchester United's name to get the um the contract up. Mm. That's all they're doing. The same thing that Ramos did. Um, the same thing that Ramos did with Manchester United. As soon as people hear on oh, Man United's bid or whatever, all of a sudden, man's price goes up and it gives them more leverage. Rafa Varane, yeah, is not going to commit to Manchester United when Pogba hasn't even committed to Man United. It doesn't make sense. Well, pe people are saying that Varane wants to leave, which I, which I don't know. I mean, he hasn't signed the contract yet, but, but I think Ancelotti I mean, could. I think money. Ancelotti could convince him. I think Ancelotti could convince him to sign that new contract now. Bro, so. I will never, ever, ever, yeah, I will never believe, yeah, ever, for one second, that man <laughs> wants to leave. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? I'll never believe that. Based off what? what yeah. he's, not he's not winning enough trophies. <laughs> or, he or he's not getting paid enough money. Bro, this brother would only want to leave, yeah, if it was to better his career. Going to Man United doesn't better Rafa, Rafa Varane's career. It doesn't. No. It would Go have to play be for a, Oli a man instead City. of play for Carlo Ancelotti. Are you mad? Yeah. That don't make no a, sense. A man, a man City or maybe a Bayern Munich, but bro, it makes not zero be sense. Not bro. really much. Yeah. Man said Real Madrid didn't have a great season. What did United have a great season? What did they? The thing mean, is, bro? if Real Madrid don't have a great season, they tend to rectify it pretty quickly by spending money. Man United can't really say the same. Speaking exactly speaking by spending like money way. and bringing in the right manager, which they've done, they've brought in Carlo Ancelotti, bro. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no chance, yeah. There's no chance Real Madrid, yeah, are going to let Ramos and Varane go, bro. There's no mm. chance. I cannot see it, bro. All this talk of oh yeah, they're gonna try and agree a fee and all this men, bro. Them man are, them man ain't reliable. So they so what? Man my, my United are gonna get Varane and Sancho, yeah. Apparently, hmm. but there's no money. Hmm. So what, Man United right. are going to spend 60 million on Varane, yeah? And spend 80 million on Sancho, yeah? Is that what man are telling me? Off the bat, and then still ain't got a DM. Hmm. Don't Bruv, sound... 80 sound million fishy. Real Madrid won, and I think and Varane's got like 18 months left in his contract or something like that. 80 sound million. Fishy. Doesn't sound make no fishy. sense, bro. About United will go... As high as 75. Man United are not paying 75 million for a player, yeah? With one and a half years on his contract. They're not doing that, bro. Do you know who's in charge of that money? <laughs> like, bruv, if you genuinely believe that, you're an idiot. We're getting linked with Kieran Trippier, blood, for 43 million euros or something like that. A man really think that we're going to sign... This contract, Trippier, is, yeah? we're gonna contract sign runs Varane. out in 2022. Varane... Bro, Varane's, his contract Varane. runs out. He's got less than a year left on his contract. The man's going to spend 75 million. Do you honestly yeah. believe so, that's going to be the case? So, so that's the first thing. So you've got Varane's contracts running out at next summer. So May United will look at that and say, why would we pay 75 million now and we can negotiate for free later? Not that I don't I don't even think he'd go to May United anyway. I think he's he, he'd get better offers on a free. Varane is much like Rudiger at our club. Very strong bargaining position, yeah? Because he's world-class, right? Mm. World-class centre-back in Varane. And he, he's got a year left. And we know when players run down their contract, they're more likely to get more wage salary um, when they move for free. They, in fact, not even more likely. It's factual that you're going to get more money. Do you know what I mean? Because there's no transfer fee included. The transfer fee is the biggest, the biggest outlay of money that you could possibly have for a transfer. Then after that, it, it will be, you know, wages, agents, fees, and all these little details and bonuses. But... If you move on a free as a player, you're gonna you're gonna secure the package. <laughs> you're gonna secure the bag. So he he if he wants to run down his contract and and leave Real Madrid in a precarious situation, not only are Real Madrid gonna continue to offer him more and more money because they don't want to lose him on a free, but he's gonna continue to have more clubs than just Manchester United. Mm. No disrespect after him. Do you know what I mean? So we've been linked to him as well. But again, I just I just don't see him I don't see him moving for that fee right now. I think I think he'll either sign a new contract or he'll run it down a bit longer. Um, yeah, I don't see Man United. Man United are not going to sign Varane and Sancho in the same window. It's not going to happen. Of course not. Do you know what I mean? But be you lucky to get one for that. Manchester United are very good at making fans believe that they're in for in for certain players. That's what they'll do. They'll put in a bid that they know is going to get rejected just so they can say, "Oh, look, we tried in it." Mm. There's no mm. way in hell 
that Ramos is going, yeah, and then Varane is going to go to Manchester United. For what, bro? To do what? To win what? You don't leave Real Madrid to go Man United, bro, unless you're toasted, unless you're finished, bro. Mm. Who's the last player we got from Real Madrid? Di Maria, bro. Yeah. And he, and he, he didn't even want to go Man United. He Gone was there for a year. He didn't even want to go. He yeah. got forced to go. These men are not going to force Rafa Varane out. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? If he doesn't sign a new contract, yeah, they're not going to take peanuts for him. They'll let him go on a free, bruv. Mm. They'll let him go on a free. So it's one of them ones where if United fans genuinely think, yeah, that United are willing to spend up to 75 million for a centre-back that's got one year left on his contract, mm. you're deluded. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It doesn't make any business sense no. whatsoever. And I've read a few places that Rafa Varane is going to sign a new deal. And if I was a betting man, I would bet that he signs a new deal at Real Madrid and a lucrative one as well without Ramos there. Yeah. Just out of seniority, he becomes the main guy at the back. Yeah. And then you've got Milita Militao and other brothers coming in. And, and, and Alaba coming Alaba in. Alaba as well. Yeah, it's just it's the future. It's just it's the new Real Madrid defence. Do you know what I mean? So this is... This is... And you've got, are you leaving Carlo to go play for Oli? <laughs> no, honestly. Like, what sense does that make? Like, honestly. As much as I would love to believe that Rafael Varane thinks that Manchester United is a step up from Real Madrid, anyone with a bit of sense would know that that's not the case. Mm. Yeah, you'd have to be in prime Fergie time for that to be going on. Do you know what I mean? It's... 100%. Um, like not my not. man said, yeah, um, they'll give Sergio Ramos's wages to Rafael Varane. I'm sure that's all he wanted anyway. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? Because the chance of him leaving, um, leaving, like he said, sunny Madrid, yeah, for rainy Manchester, bro. And, and Pogba hasn't even hasn't even committed to the club yet. So why would you go to a club that could be getting significantly worse mm. if Pogba leaves? And Pogba's, very Pogba's very got curious. man of the match in the first game in the tournament and he's probably going to be player of the tournament the mood that he looks in. And then so May, he decides Maynard to leave. May United in a very precarious position because they've finished second, which for me was a, f a false image. Um, they lost the Europa League final, but with the right changes and the right decision making at the top they could mm. be you know they could they're, they're, they're maybe two or three signings away from and a top manager from from being being serious again do you know what i mean they're not far off this is not a main United team that's way way off of course i think the, the signings that have been made recently you know are very suspect in terms of style of play i don't really understand yeah. what you're trying to do with wan bissaka maguire coming in etc etc however a better manager gets those brothers moving in the right direction for a couple of years and then you start, you know, stabling yourself in Champions League football regularly as well in terms of reaching the knockout stages, trying to win a cup again and, and just building back slowly with a proper manager. And then you you start to fizzle out some brothers that you don't need anymore and start bringing in some some quality players that can play with the ball. But mm. you're also not far off losing, you know, a couple of brothers, sticking with this manager and suddenly your 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 top four you know, security is not so secure anymore and you're fighting for fourth um year in, year out, which is yeah. which is which is not not out of the question because we're we're you know we're looking to do madness right now with, with Hakimi coming in. I think that, that deal is looking like it's I think that deal will get done quite soon to be honest because it's it's looking like Inter Milan need the money before the end of the month. We want Hakimi, Tuka wants Hakimi and we got players that we can also offer in exchange. Yeah. Haaland were being linked with Again, I don't know how how realistic it can get, it can get done, but just the link itself tells you that it's not it's not a joke thing. Liverpool, you know, with Klopp, we don't know what's going to happen there. Man City are still there, and and Aston Villa are, are holding up Arsenal at gunpoint. So <laughs> everybody's moving mad. Do you know what I mean? It's like there's no time to sleep in the Prem. There really is not no time. It's lucky yeah, that Tottenham have had bids for Smith Rowe turned down. I think they bid for Wood Prowse or something, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they, they, when Dia they've signed when already, Dia. so that means they're spending the Grealish money before it comes in. So that means Grealish to City is pretty much done then. I, I, I would think so. The way that they're moving, because it's very intelligent from them. It's the same with Leicester to bring in Samari before 
a Madison or one of them brothers make a move. Not guaranteeing that it will, but it's always Madison better. signed a new deal last season, didn't he? And now there's mm. rumours of him to Arsenal and stuff like that. Yeah, there was a couple of rumours. It's always better to bring in the guy that you're replacing before you get rid of the guy you're replacing. Absolutely. You're, because, because otherwise the money's just going to get driven up. You, you you sell for an, a massive amount and then people can be like, well, you got money now, so come and, come and put it on the table for this guy that you want to replace him with. Um, and it's the same thing Aston Villa are doing. Aston Villa are trying to build a proper, proper team. Not saying they're gonna be a threat to United, but you know, it's, it's still it's just not what you want to see. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to you don't want to see your people people trying to get involved in top four races. Leicester did it. There's no reason why Aston Villa can't do it. They're a big club, so yeah, man, it's 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 ropey. Because look at Arsenal and Tottenham now. You take your foot off the handbrake for too long, people, and you can fall quick. Bruv, it's a madness, you know. It's true. Mm. It's true. You look at um Tottenham right now, like them man are getting linked with Fonseca. I don't even know if they're getting linked to any decent footballers, bro. I think they're going to wait till the manager comes in. But if they lose Harry Kane, that talk has gone silent. But respectfully, who the hell wants to go to Tottenham if Harry Kane's not there? He's literally the only thing that's attractive about that football club right now. Mm. We're going to see yeah. a serious reshuffle at the top of the table, man, for these like, yeah. like these positions just outside the Champions League, especially. Aston Villa, Leicester. Do you know what I mean? Even if Everton, if they get Rafa Benitez, wouldn't rule them out. Arsenal and Tottenham, and it's just nuts, man. Like, the, the whole pyramid scheme of the table is just changing before our eyes. It's already Bro, changed. That man saying, why would Madison downgrade? Imagine you've got you've got a man saying, yo, why would you leave Leicester and go to Arsenal, bro? It's true, though, isn't it? Why would you? <laughs> it's nuts. Madison could get, probably wait for something better. I don't know. But Arsenal right now are not a, a appealing team to go to at all. Really, not, not. Even, not even close to it, man. Yo, where's DG, man? I need all this. I got all this smoke from him. He's not here. <laughs> Aston Villa, fam. <laughs> and Arsenal from... bid for Ben White as well, bro. <laughs> he rejected as well. Bid rejected, rejected for Ben White, was it? Yeah, 30 40 million. million or something. 40 million, it was. Yeah, 40 M's, bro, for Ben White. Like, football and, is gone, bro. I'm rejected, like, yeah. Man, uh, man are rejecting 40 million for Ben White. Ben White's about a 40 million player, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, he's in the English squad, isn't it? <laughs> they immediately taxed for that. That's that's, no. that's that's tax for that, just just alone being in the England squad. So that's what I mean. I mean, what, what are Arsenal doing? Obviously, I know that they're getting rid of um Jacko, isn't it? To Roma. Well, I don't even know if that's done. yeah, but also there was rumors of them getting rid of more than one player. Obviously, Jack is meant to be leaving. A few men, I think, asked Le Leno, Leno apparently wanted to go, didn't he? And then they were saying um, they were getting rid of the, a few centre-backs as well, I think. Well, Holden and Chambers are still chilling. Bellerin's there. Uh, Bellerin's supposed to be leaving. Who else That's from right. Arsenal is meant to be leaving? A few men, you know. Gwendu as well. Gwendouzi. Yeah, you Gwendouzi's there. Um, Torreira's just coming back from Atletico, I believe. Yeah. So he's he's probably gonna be looking. Yo, Arsenal, they got a lot to sort out, man. They're a mess. Like it's crazy. Their 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 situation with that squad is just nuts. William, it's mm. crazy. I've never seen like it's actually it's worse probably than it's worse situation than the Tottenham squad because it looks like Son's gonna sign a new contract. Mm. God knows why. I'm starting to question whether that brother's serious about just his career in general because I don't but know I why think he's Son's just contract. somewhere where he's loved, yeah, and he just wants to stay there. <laughs> You know, some players are like that, bro. Like, okay, honestly, bro. success looks different to different people, bro. That's why yeah. I have to keep letting people know. Success mm. to some man is getting up, doing a job they love, and being appreciated for it. That's yeah, it. Do you sure. know what I mean? So he's super comfortable at Spurs, and he'll become the main man when Harry Kane leaves. So mm. really, that works for him. He's the main man in his country, and he'll be the main man at his football club, bro. That's what comfort looks like. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's 29 now. And you just thought, you know what, man's comfortable here. You know, like that. You know, you get to a certain age, man don't want to move too much. Yeah. Don't like too much change, bruv. You just want to be... He's in London as well, he's living, yeah. That's what I mean, Tottenham's the like, epitome of routine, bro. Do you know what I mean? Challenge mm -hmm. without challenging and win nothing. That's what they do. <laughs> every every year, at least you know what you're going to get, bruv. Mm, you're going to go down as a legend now, that brother. That's what I'm saying, and you'll still be advertising mobile phones and other cooking appliances and that in his whole country, like, <laughs> the face of everything, you know, like that, bro, like the bank <laughs> It's that's crazy. Someone's going to be getting bank anyway in Korea. Yeah. So. It's mad, you know, because when you hit 29 now, it's difficult to get that big move. 
it's like it's, it's one of them ones where like big clubs now they're so on searching for the next big thing when yep. you when you're when you're flirting it at 28 29 Mohamed Salah Mane son type age it's not actually that easy to make that move that you're trying to that you might be looking looking to make right. or thinking or that i'm thinking you can make but no, how's real you, bro you know the, yeah. you know sometimes the grass ain't always greener mm, mm. It ain't always like, greener. you know sometimes it like, you know what that big move and then you go somewhere where you're not loved you're not appreciated you gotta start all over again move your family after being somewhere for a long time and it don't work out bro mm, mm. It's not guaranteed to work out if he goes somewhere else. It's not guaranteed. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, he's a baller, but bruv, sometimes it's better the devil you know, isn't it? It's like Varane. Varane will get Ramos's money, Son will get Kane's money, and it's all good. Everybody eats. So it's not actually the worst thing. I just think he's just too good for them, isn't it? Obviously, from a playing standpoint, this brother could be playing for Bayern Munich for, for as far as I'm concerned. Dual footed, play can play on both wings, play out front. Yep. Just efficient as hell. I can see him in that Bayern Munich team causing absolute chaos. Gnabry, Sané, Son. You got Lewandowski and Müller as well. Crazy. It would be. It would be. It would be anarchy. Do you know what I mean? It would be mad. Um, it would be a serious upgrade on on um, on on Coman. Coman's a good talent. Obviously, it's a completely different yeah. age bracket. But just in terms of being efficient and just just putting the ball in the back of the net. And making you know the correct decision most of the time, this this brother at Bayern Munich would be crazy. I've always I've always pictured him in a Bayern Munich team because I just think he's he's he just is the epitome of Bayern Munich, just efficiency and ruthlessness, taking yeah. your chances. Hundred so, percent. I think that that's a team that um that suits him. But bro, he's just comfortable. You know mm -hmm. the ones. And like Coutinho is a very good example. Absolute shellers in the prem, shellers. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But then man went. Everywhere else he's gone, it just hasn't quite hit the Clip. same. You know what yeah. that means? And it's just like, sometimes when you've got a good thing, yeah? Just treasure it, bruv. Don't yeah, ruin it. Because, don't ruin it, because it's not guaranteed to bust like that anywhere mm -hmm. else. The difference Nobody with the Harry Kane, because he's just a goal scorer, and mm. he just relies on man getting him the ball, yeah? Mm. I think he'll be all right, because he's only going to go to a team that creates more chances than Tottenham. Yeah. yeah. So for England right now, he, he's not looking it, bruv. You know, like that. But they're not creating the chances for him. He was isolated yeah. against creation, man. Oh, that brother bro, was just... Horrible. Horrible, bruv. Man, I need to talk about this England, yeah, because... He was starving, bro. I was speaking to Louis this morning, yeah. Mm. Beneventi, yeah. And you man already know what Louis like. Some of them Brexit opinions when it comes to football. <laughs> and I told man that certain men are done at it. <laughs> He, he somehow he rates Jordan Henderson. I don't know why, in it. That's that shit's for another day. But here's my thing now. Yeah, I'm looking mm. at this now. I said he was like, what did I say? I said, um, yeah. He said he stuck some money on Italy to win it. Yeah. Mm. And I said, bro. I said they'll be there or thereabouts. And then he was like, oh, kind of like, oh, do you think so? Kind of thing. They were six to one, and that. I said, bro. Bond the bookies, innit? Bookies don't know nothing, bro. You know, like that. Bookies don't know nothing. Don't listen to them, man. At the end of the day, from what man's seen, yeah, they're going to be a very hard team to beat, bro. And whoever beats Italy is probably going to be very close, yeah, to winning the competition, in my opinion, innit? Because they're a very good, uh, solid team. Mm. And then he, and then I said, I said something about Germany, and he was like, oh, yeah, I fancy England to beat Germany. And I was like, are you sure, blood? I, I said, are you why. sure? What Germany, you sure? Germany with Gretzko, Gretzko in midfield, Sane, Gnabry. Bro, I said to him, are you sure, my guy? Kai. Are you sure? Like, are you sure, sure? Because that's not really, the maths ain't mathing to me, bro. I said, don't let this England team con you into believing that they're good, yeah? England beat not, a very not, poor Croatia team with only having two shots on target, bro. Like, England never played well, you know? Don't listen but, to... 11 for 11, Germany, for me, are still the better team. Germany, Bruv, Germany yeah. are going to pam England if they play England. Neuer, don't get twisted. Rudiger, Kimmich, Goretzka. And it's not just that, yeah? It's like England's midfield balance still isn't right. You know them ones? The Calvin Phillips thing, yeah, it looked good, yeah, against a sluggish Croatia that have no mobility, bro. They looked very old when we played them. But mm. as much as Croatia looked old and slow, England only had two shots on target. Don't sleep on that. Mm. Don't sleep on that, bro. You're meant to mash up a team like Croatia. 
England never mm. matched them up, bro. If England was serious, that Croatian team is the one, yeah, that need to get rolled over, blood. It's not the same Croatian team we played at the World Cup. Bro, it's not even close, bro. Not like, even close. Modric is a few years on. Rakitic is not there. No man, no man, Zukic either. Like, it's not the same team. Do you know what I mean? Bro, it's not the same team. Bro, like, it, it don't make no sense, innit? it? Like, that's the bottom line. Perisic. Perisic as well. So many. They're, so very many. Old, they're a very old team. And England barely laid a glove on them. Do you know mm. what I mean? Pandanovic didn't even play, did he? No. no goal. No. And bro, you know so what the maddest thing about the situation for me was, yeah? Like, mm. you look at that England team there, and how many really... I don't even know if they created many big chances in the game. I don't know how many chances they created. All I know is, yeah... The Sterling goal. The Sterling goal, yeah? Do you know what I mean? Came out... Kind of came out of nowhere. And my man... Run, yeah. My run, man still hit the goalkeeper, blood. But you know what like mm. You have a big like chance. Harry Kane really never good. had a sniff, bro. He never had a sniff in the game, apart from the back posting that he missed. Oh, oh, he said that Handanovic isn't even Croatian. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking to myself, where's that brother from? Because he's not even Croatian. Then where, is he? Is it Serb Serbia? I don't Slovenian, even know bro. Slovenia. That's it. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, for, for England, it's just a vibes thing for me. Do you know what I mean? It's just a vibes thing. If I'm being honest, I think. Bro, England flatter to deceive all the time, bro. I'm, I'm not. But are you even emotionally connected to England like that? No, I don't. Bro. I don't care, bro. Like, I want. I want them to do well, but like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be like heartbroken if it doesn't. If if nothing happens, it's just like, all right, cool, no problem. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. you just move on. So. It's just a vibes thing. It's just, it it's is. just well, what I'm not going to do <laughs> is I'm not going to get sucked in. Mm. I'm not going to get sucked in, bro. They created two big chances in 90 minutes against a team that offered nothing. Nothing at all. I can't yeah. remember England goalkeeper making a save. Pickford's awful. So if he was busy, we would know. Do you know what I mean? Chance quality was terrible from England against a very poor Croatian team. If England come up against any of the big countries, yeah? Belgium, France. Belgium, France, Italy, Germany, Italy. I expect England to get beat comfortably. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's what they do. They lure you in and they give you they give you hope, innit? People start talking about think, how well England were playing, yeah? I um, think they're in, that, they're, they're in that Spain tier. Spain, maybe Holland... Yeah, Spain kind. are bad, bro. Like, Spain mm. are so bad. Well, they're probably, like actually, yeah, no, I won't even do that. They're probably better than Spain. Spain are looking are looking mad. With, Spain uh, are looking with, shit. <laughs> but the thing is, on any given Sunday, bro, honestly, yeah, mm. I don't trust the balance of that England team. Mm. I don't trust it. Kyle Walker looked horrible. Oh, God, bro. He gave the ball away so many times. I was like, just bring Reese James on, my guy. What are you, what's going on here? Gave the ball away for fun. Yeah. For fun. It was just no care for the football, <clears throat> just giving it away. It reminded me of when Jordan Henderson played against Croatia. Do you remember that semi final? Oh, oh my god, Jordan Henderson! You never, I, I, I still haven't forgiven you, fam. That performance yeah. against Croatia in the semi final of the World Cup from him was one of the worst performances I've seen from an England player. It yeah. was spamming the ball back to the other oh, team, bro, just booting the ball. Just no control, no composure, no no nothing. Just every single time he got the ball, just booted it up the pitch. Booting mm. it, booting it, booting it. Clearance, clearance, clearance. No composure, no understanding of trying to play out from the back, nothing. Just clearly just too nervous for the occasion. Yeah. Just clearly, that's what, clearly, that's what I mean. evidently. Tri Trippier left back, bro, in a back four. Do that against um, Germany and see what happens. Brothers taking penalties off Calvert-Lewin and missing, you know. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Bro, crazy. do that against <laughs> Germany and see what happens do you know what i'm saying like all these men all these journalists over yeah, germany style performance team. it was terrible bro it was a terrible performance it was a terrible football match but england won and they yeah, were at germany home. germany still have a better team that's not that's not cap but this is what it is so england are a long 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 way away bro people talking about semi-finals and that like bruv, if England make the quarterfinals, I think they've had a very good tournament. Yeah, I think quarterfinals is, is a good tournament for England. I think it's a good tournament for them, bro. Do you know what I mean? Get to the last eight, bro. Get mm. to the last eight. I think it's a great um it's a great tournament. But when men are talking about winning it and all this other thing, nah, it, nah, come on, bro. No Sancho, no Chilwell in the squad against a leggy Croatia. When Croatia were kind of sitting back, the Grealishes and the Sancho's of this world are the kind of players you want to be isolating players. 
unless unless France is going to drop a stinker and get knocked out to someone they shouldn't be getting knocked out to, and England are going to avoid them, because I'm not trying to see Paul Pogba and Kante and Mbappe on the break going up against our fullbacks, or our, sorry, mm. our centre backs especially, uh, and Griezmann and Benzema. And <laughs> listen, we could be here all day. It's not. It's not even. It's not a competition. It's not. Yeah. Um, what did you make of him dropping Jack? Because Jack Grealish was dropped, and then he brought in Sterling. And and a lot of people have this. Will, will say, and I get the logic to be to be honest, is that Kane loves to drop deep. Mount wants to be on the ball. Foden wants to be on the ball. Grealish wants to be on the ball. Where's the runner? Um, yeah, Grealish Kane, is the runner. Kane's... Grealish runs with the ball at his feet. Yeah, no, no, off the bro. ball runner. Off the ball runner to spot Grealish's passes or to spot Foden's passes. Yeah, but bro, you don't need that at international level, especially when you're playing against. Um compact defences, bro. You're not going to come up against high lines like that in international football, bro. Mm. So it doesn't matter. All this runner thing. It's a load of nonsense, bro. People are just trying to find an excuse to play these these pace merchants like Rashford and Sterling, bro. There's no place for players like that, yeah, <laughs> in, in international football, really, in it, unless you want to make places for them, bro. Grealish is good enough and he's He's the most effective player in our team, bro. You've seen Harry Kane's only as good as his supply line. Mm. He was awful against Croatia, bro. It's true. You know, didn't get no, didn't get no supply. He didn't get no supply. And when he was coming deep, he was giving the ball away as well. But because Sterling scored, everyone's going to pretend that he played well now. This mm. this is the problem with football right now. Like he, he Sterling will play the next game now. Yeah, he wasn't I, good. I'd say if Grealish didn't start the first game, it's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be a, a tricky one. I, I can see him not starting quite a few games now going forward for England in yeah. this tournament. I can see it. 100%. And like he said, it was a sluggish performance from Croatia. England couldn't even dominate them. Mm. And now that Sterling scored, that's almost guaranteed that he starts the next game. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And so he loves Rashford. He loves Rashford as well. So he'll play one And then he brought Rashford on up front and that, Mm. Man, just playing the media darlings, bro. It's not even about picking the best players right now. And unfortunately, Jack Grealish, his face just doesn't fit in this occasion, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like even I Foden, think, I think, I think there's Foden a way to hit the post early doors and then mm. done f all for the rest of the game, bro. I think, I think there's a way he can incorporate a lot of these guys. I mean, if he goes with with the creators to to first of all supply Harry Kane, but also defeat the low block that Scotland are going to put up, and then if you take the lead and you're two nil up or whatever in Scotland are chasing, then bring on your Sterlings and your Rashfords because then they can run in behind when, mm -hmm. when Scotland push up and then you've got... When they're chasing your the game. When you're chasing the game, you've got your guys that can press as well off the ball, win the ball out the pitch, run in behind um, and, and just give you that threat because look at what France did with Germany. France took the lead and then Mbappe on the break. <laughs> Done. That was it. Like mm -hmm. They scored two more goals. They were ruled out, of course, but you could see the threat and that's... Yeah, the space you can never do open up. Yeah, Germany could never do with that for the whole game. It was just Mbappe just tearing them up on the break, setting up Benzema, scoring himself as well. Um, and you know, if you if it wasn't, it was very marginal the offsides. But if it if, you know if it had gone his way a split second more, it would have been a pam. It would have been a France three 0 So mm -hmm. tactically, that's 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 how that's how England got to look at it. Then when they come up against the big teams, and we'll see what happens in it. But I think regardless, they get rolled over no matter who they play. Not even maybe not rolled over. I'm sure they'll do the fight. The fighting thing, but <laughs> I just don't quality wise. I just don't. I just don't see how they're gonna step to. They don't have it, bro. The best like, in, this, in this tournament, I don't know if this is true. So you, you man, fact check this for me. But he's mm. saying that um, he's saying that defending comes first and Trippier is more versatile. That's why he played at left back, bro. You've got Luke Shaw and Chilwell. What's the point in bringing two left footed um left backs to then play a right footed one? Oh, that's the one decision I didn't get. I understand. So again, he bottled it. One. I think he bottled it, you oh. know, and he brought Luke Shaw because Luke Shaw got into team of the year or something like that. So the media probably had pressure on him to include Shaw because Shaw hasn't been in his squads for ages. Mm. And all of a sudden he's brought him because he's bowing to media pressure. That's all it is. I was I was a bit confused. I mean, I, clearly I get... he doesn't read, man. I get there's a mixture of you want experience in tournaments and this is this England team don't really have a lot of caps under their belt, most of them, outside of Sterling, Kane, Jeremy, you know I mean? Maguire. But even still, um I didn't I didn't get that. Just the balance of the team playing a right for a left back is it's, it's usually off if you if you do that. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't really make any sense to me. You know, even even Pep Pep loves to tinker, but usually, you know, he's played Cancelo out there a few times, but Players like Cancelo, Akimi, they can play both sides, but you know, 
usually he's going to go over left foot or even if that's Delph or Senjenko just because he wants that balance and yeah they can come inside but they will still be mostly left footed I don't I don't I don't get the the logic of playing Trippier out there because he doesn't he's not he doesn't play left side do you know what I mean but that's what I mean and when it was in a um when it was in a five I didn't I wasn't really against it bro because I was like whatever in it he's got a good delivery if he comes inside and that but bro in a four I think it pissed me off even more in a five because <laughs> because yeah. in a five in a five your wing backs have got to be out wide they've got to stretch the pitch they've got to be the ones that are on the byline um sorry on the on the on the on the touch line um getting chalk on their boots to, to stretch the pitch because you've got attacking midfielders playing in half spaces i think if he played it in a back five i'd be even more angry it just shouldn't yeah. be happening it's not like chill and sure have had bad seasons if they had had bad seasons then fair enough sure was player of the year at united was he did he get it in the end no, sorry, Bruno know. Fernandez got it. Bruno Fernandez got it, but yeah, Shaw would have come team close. Team of the season, though. Team of the season, sure, yeah. Think, yeah. And then, and then Chilwell had a good end to the season, winning the Champions League. So I just don't, I do not understand the logic behind behind what he's done with that one. I don't get it. It makes no sense. And then if that's the point, my thing is, yeah, just don't bring one of them. Because why do you need to bring two left-footed left backs to not play either of them? What's the <laughs> likelihood, yeah, that you're going to lose Trippier, um, Chilwell, and need Shaw? Also, why does he have Cody and Ben White and like he's got so many? You know what I mean? He's just got so many centre backs as yeah, well. He's got so I've, many defenders to play. I thought he's going to play a back three. So did I. With the amount of defenders he brought, and again, yeah, that tells same. you that he's probably looking to change it up later on in the group stage. And he's got Saka as well. What did mm. he bring Saka as a left back, a left wing back, as a midfielder? What did he bring him as? Because you've brought Saka, Shaw and Chilwell, three left-sided players that can play in that left wing-back position. Yeah. You're not even playing wing-backs. The whole squad selection is mad. And then you've left Jesse at home. Left Jesse at home. Left James Ward-Prowse at home. So if, if Trippi is on there for set pieces, that could have been James Ward-Prowse easily. Um, Cody's in there. Mm. You've brought in Ben White now, which is which is calm because I think Ben White deserves to be in there over Cody. But why why was Cody even selected in the first place over like Tomori? You don't know how to use Sancho. It's it's gonna be long, isn't it? It's gonna be long. It's Bruv, gonna be long. Sancho yeah. weren't even in the squad, my guy. <laughs> the whole thing stinks. <laughs> why are you bringing all these? Why are you bringing all these players to not play them, Matisse? What what what, what was the reason for Sancho not being in the squad? Did he pick up a knock or what? I don't get it. Bruv, I just think he wasn't selected, my bro, because Chilwell as well. Don't make any sense. And Henderson was on the bench, and he was an unused substitute. When you're bringing on Jude Bellingham ahead of Jordan Henderson, yeah, that tells me that Jordan Henderson's not actually fit. That's what it tells mm. me. Because surely, if you're trying to see a game out, you would bring on your experienced player. Yeah. Surely. Would you have wanted um, Greenwood to go as well? No, United pulled him out, though, innit, I think. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think United pulled him out because um, they're saying that he was playing playing through pain towards the end of the season, bro. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, the whole thing is just... The whole thing is just... It's very strange to me, bro. When you look at the, um, the selections and all these other things... Him being on the bench and being unused tells me that he was never fit to play in the first place. Mm. So why is he there ahead of players that are fit to play now? Yeah, I'm That tells me that he's brought a lot of men from media pressure and he doesn't really rate them. Taking injured players is always a no-no for me. The tournament is too short for that. The tournament What's is that? too short. The tournament is too short to be bringing injured players. I don't get it. This is not Premier League squad you're submitting. This is the Euros. It's literally four weeks. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like... Four or five weeks. I don't. I don't get why you're bringing injured players. If they've missed the first two weeks, you could be out of the competition by then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy, especially when That's James Ward. Again, it's, it, if if the people competing for these spots had not had good seasons, then cool. But James Ward Prowse has been consistent in the Premier League for the last two years. So yeah. again, don't get it. Do you not get it? And it's not like England are blessed with a load of good set piece takers, especially when Trent goes out injured as well now. So. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what he's cooking, but good luck to him. It's it's it's, it's a big this is a big tournament for Southgate because I think the World Cup kind of like I think now everybody's kind of they know where it was with the World Cup. Do you know what I mean? You only have to go back and watch just watch just watch the highlights of the games that we went through and how we got through. Um, yeah. You know, going through against Colombia on penalties, um, stat padding against Tunisia and etc. And then as soon as we come up against um, Croatia, who by the way. You know, yeah, Croatia are a very good team back then, but you know, you should still mm -hmm. you should still have a chance, but outplayed, outplayed. So now this is the first, this is this is the tournament where it's like, yo, what can you do? But the narrative always changes with England because every single time they go into a tournament, is it's they're not ready, they're not ready yet. 
Not ready yet. Next yeah. next tournament. And it's all, it's always the next tournament. Have you seen? Have you noticed that? Every single time we go into a major tournament, it's always the next one. The World Cup yeah. next year. Well, why? What's gonna what one year one one year's aged for our players? They're gonna be one year older. But what's the big difference? Why why can't you just win now? Harry Kane is literally at the peak of his powers. Just had the probably one of the best seasons of his career. Do you know what I mean? England is always going to be a next, peak of his next, powers. A next year, next tournament thing. They're never going to be good enough, bro. They're never going to be good enough because they don't have they don't have the right mixture of the players and the manager, bro. Like you're letting down the players, yeah, the current crop of players by having a manager this incompetent, bro. This negative. You're literally letting them down. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It actually doesn't make any I, sense. I think I think he's actually got too many options. You know when managers have too many options, they start to second guess what they should do. Like you've got you've got Sancho, you've got Foden, you've got Grealish, you've got Mount, you've got Saka. You've got too many technical ballers now. You don't know you don't know what to do with them. Yeah. Too much, too much to handle. And then on top of that, you've got Sterling and Rashford collecting MBs. You got Harry Kane. You got to, you don't know what you're doing. It's too much. It's too much to deal mm. with. Because right. if the you brothers can't that, deal with all that, you shouldn't be the you shouldn't be the manager. The brothers that we're saying that potentially should not be in the starting eleven. Your Hendersons, your Rashfords, your your Sterlings. Them brothers are all MBEs. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like the peer pressure is there already. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's it's, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. I was happy for Sterling though, even though I didn't have him in my starting eleven. I was happy for him to do well because. He's always constantly getting dragged in the media. Um, and even after the game, there was like, yo, do you think you justified your spot? And he kind of looked at her like, oh, who do you think you are? <laughs> even questioning yeah. me. Do you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, it's good season or bad season. He's still, he's still, you know, done major on the majority. He's done very well at Man City since he made that move. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's no, he no, usually... of course. He, no, he's done well since he's been there, like mm. in terms of numbers. But bro... He didn't play well. It's a it? system, isn't it? It's a system. It's a system. He didn't play well, bro. Like he didn't play with the season. He definitely didn't play well for England. And the thing is, the goal will overshadow a very bad performance again. L and, Lingard and actually probably has a better record in terms of doing well for England than than a lot of these brothers. Well, of course he does, and he's not there. And that's why I say to you, yeah, a lot of this thing is media pressure, yeah, and PR. Mm. It's PR, bro. Like a lot of these men, yeah, are playing because man's afraid to drop them. It's easy to drop Grealish because the, the media aren't going to say, where's Jack Grealish? Like, Gary mm. Neville come out here yeah, barefaced and was like, oh, I wouldn't start Grealish ahead of this player, that player. All, all the players he named, he's better than. Mm. So, like, the media are very, very much, yeah, in favour of certain players playing and Gareth Southgate ain't got the bottle. Mm. That's just all it is, my guy. Doesn't surprise us though, does it? Do you know what I mean? Like I said, you you look at look at Mancini at Italy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's not he's not listening to nobody. <laughs> he's gonna do what yeah. he wants. Conte the same when he was at Italy. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you get if you get brothers that can handle it and are serious um and, and have their own vision, I feel like England too many times when we well, now that we've appointed Southgate, it seems to be again, it's a very in-house kind of kind of appointment. It's not it's not based on you know, footballing or coaching or you know, yes, he's been in the setup through the under twenty ones, the under nineteens. But again, so so is Jody Morris. It doesn't it doesn't mean that you're ready for the big 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 job. Do you know what I mean? It's, it really doesn't. Going up through the youth setup is fantastic. It makes you get to know all the squad, the harmony, building up the relationships, the chemistries. That's fantastic. But when you get to the senior level, you're playing with egos now. You're playing with players that have achieved stuff. You're playing with the best. You know, some of the best players in the world. This is a whole different ball game. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and to manage that and to make it work takes the best managers also. It doesn't take no rookie. There's very few examples of, of managers that, that came in as rookies and did their thing. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's less examples of that than there are. There's a whole, where, where there's where there's one successful, there's about, you know, a hundred failures. Do you know what I mean? So there's a reason why top level managers exist. Facts. Too much disrespect on this role. It's the most important role. But bro, it's it's almost like it's not. It, they're just using it like it's like it's a community job now, blood. You know them one. That's what it is. It's almost just like a community job, bro. Like it's just like being a local MP and that now. It's just like, mm. bro, like man, man, any man could just be it if you get on with people and people like you and that, bro. He's a top, just man, like, a top he's manager. Just, a top he's manager. just that digestible face, blood. That that people don't want to slate because ah, oh, he used to play for England and that. 
it's the face of the company, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the face of the company. It's um a proper manager. I may not are playing a playing Chelsea in the Super League final, Super Cup final. Sorry, in in mm. August. Do you know what I mean? A proper manager and Arsenal are not getting rejected by Buendia. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? A proper manager and 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 Tottenham are not stressing out expressions. Much love, mm. but stressed. <laughs> so stressed. Do you know what I mean? It's like. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's this is what people. This is what unserious clubs are doing to people right now. People are not even looking so forward good. to the Premier League season, and the fixtures are coming out. And they're telling me they don't even care, <laughs> bro. But this is what I'm saying, bro. And you know what? What the thing is, um, you know what the worst thing about the situation is. Like you said, historically the appointments of English managers have been awful. Fabio yeah. Capello is probably the only manager yeah that got hired on his resume, mm. and even then, yeah. They never looked at his personality, yeah, and the way he actually manages and how it would fit the environment. Mm. They didn't look at all those things. Yeah. But Sven Oren Eriksson, joke thing. You know them ones there, like Sam Allardyce, joke Sam thing. Allardyce, yeah. Hudson, joke thing. All yeah. these things are a joke, bruv. <laughs> like, bruv, hiring a bunch of men that have never, uh, never really won anything, achieved anything in football, and mm. then calling it the biggest job in football, bro. Yeah. It's the biggest job in football, but you don't need um, credentials for it. What kind of mm. fuckery is that? That don't make no sense. I don't understand why they never looked. I mean, why don't why didn't they look at a Mancini when he was available? Why not? Brother speaks speaks English. I don't. I don't like. What more do you? What, what are you looking for here? Do you know what I mean? I don't. I, I don't get why they don't. Why they don't. Why they don't just prioritize looking for top managers because there's not a lot of top English managers, or if there, there isn't any. Do you know what I mean? Just, the country's hanging his hopes on Steven Gerrard right now. So just just stick with going with the with the, Wait, with the you, level you of never job know. needed. He might be the next England manager, Steven Gerrard, bro. I wouldn't even be surprised. I would not even be surprised. Frank That's Lampard, show, one of them. you know. Yeah, Man, some joke thing or Frank Lampard and Jody Morris linking up for England, bro. I can see it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? The the boys and that. Do you know what I mean? Man, I can see it right now. Honestly, some joke thing, bro. How do you honestly accept, yeah, um, expect England to do anything mm. with managers that ain't experienced? Like Gary Neville turned around and called Gareth Southgate experienced due to the fact that he played for England. What does that mean? He yeah. played for Man United, but then he couldn't do nothing as a manager. So what going for experience? <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy, but. This is this is this is where again I liken it to Tottenham and Arsenal because it's not serious. Don't want don't wait you don't want to even sit at the table to discuss yeah. about winning things. You're not you're not even trying to sit at the table now. You're now you're now you know self-inflicting your pain on yourselves in terms of you're taking yourself off the table. You're not trying to put yourself on the table. You're making stupid decisions that don't don't have the interest of winning at heart. Do you know what I mean? You're not you're not prioritizing winning. If you don't prioritize winning, you're not gonna win. Simple. Right. Facts, bro. Do you know what I mean? And not winning is very much okay in this country. Do you know what I mean? And which is why they'll never win. Participation award. That's it. You know what I mean? Get a pat on the bum and a, a, a station for fourth. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't That's even get a medal, is. by the way. No medal, you know. No, like proper couldn't even secure the bronze medal because Belgium pammed us in that in that playoff. Um, mm. People forget that. No medal, and we're getting stations. It's crazy. Some joking. I big up everyone inside. Is this what's the source for this comment? Because I'm just seeing that I'm just seeing Yeah, that. so we was just discussing this. Um just but they're saying Alonso it. going the other way. Is that yeah, is so that I, what the deal is? I, I think this deal, I mean, I don't know if it's confirmed as accepted because I was streaming, but this is the deal that I was talking about on my stream that I think is likely to go through first for Chelsea, which is a key me now because Inter Milan need to sell before the end of the month. Financially, they they've had issues. Hakimi wants to move. Um, and and also, Chelsea are very... Because Chelsea are so serious about getting it done, clearly, must be Tuchel's, Tuchel's you know, go-to guy. Um, obviously, we're playing with wing-backs and we know Hakimi can play both sides. And we've got a lot of players that Inter Milan like. So, Alonso, we tried to offer Emerson as well. I think they picked Alonso as their, as their main one. Um, because Inter Milan have a very aging team, don't they? You know, Conte went in there, signed Ashley Young, signed Kolarov. So Alonso yeah, is not actually young going to Burnley and that. Yeah, Alonso is not that old. He's like 29, maybe. Yeah. And for Inter Milan, that's very young right now. Do you know what I mean? With their age profile, that's a very young player. So 
you know, they they could use they could use Alonso. So yeah, I, I think that I think that could be the deal. And I, I'd love to see it because I, I personally don't want to keep Alonso. So if Chelsea are bidding six, I think it was sixty million euros for Akimi plus Alonso. Fantastic deal, mm. fantastic deal. So I think I think that will be Chelsea's first signing. I don't know how long it will take, but should it should yeah. be agreed quite soon. Hakimi's one hell of a player though. So if you man get him, that's gonna massively strengthen um your credentials for a title push next season. Mm, I would hope. I would hope because we have to go for that. We have to be going for that for, for challenging the title. When you win when you win your champions of Europe, there's only one way to go now, and that's to secure your 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 yourself domestically. There's there's nothing else. I don't want to see no top four race again. I don't want to be going down to the last day in here and all this nonsense. It's got to be a, a title push. Um, and if you if you come second, but you're just a couple of points off City, and you push them close, for me, you you've 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 moved up. You know what I mean? You've leveled up. And now you go again next season. So it's, it's not like you have to win it. No one really has a divine right to win the Premier League, but you have yeah. not a divine right to even challenge. But you ha- you you should be aiming to challenge if you're serious. That's the bare minimum. If you're going to be making signings like Hakimi and Haaland, then you have to be challenging. Couldn't have put it better, bro. And um, they're saying, no, Ashley Young's going back to Aston Villa. We'll see. I heard that, yeah. I did hear that as well. <laughs> Bring back Gabby or Bondaho as well from TalkSport. Let's <laughs> get everybody, Let's get everybody in. Get in it, bro. It's them or Burnley. <laughs> like, my man's just like, yo, just, just send over the paperwork. That'd be interesting to see, bro. I still thought Ashley Young, yeah. Ashley Young still had... Um, he was still Premier League level when he left. Do you mm. know what I mean? So, but if he ends up coming back to the Premier League, wouldn't be too surprised. He's gone and won a trophy or come back and he'll do yeah. whatever he wants. Um, before we wrap up, let's read this. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? Chelsea waiting to see what happens with Team Man United and Jaden before making a move for Holland. But we'll see Dortmund want a crazy bid for Holland or the player is staying this summer, which is what I thought. I think um, Chelsea need to really step on this now if they want Erling Haaland they need to step on this because if you can get I think only only one can move in it so if you get it done then the haggling that Man United are doing with Sancho suddenly becomes a situation where all right well we just sold Haaland so what now we don't need your money and you man are messing about anyway maybe we're just gonna have to keep him for another season again so I think I think Chelsea if they're, you know, they're very desperate for a striker, incredibly desperate. Giroud's looking like going to AC Milan. Tammy Abraham's not in the picture. Werner, you can't rely oh, on. Giroud's going to AC as well. Well, Giroud was massively, he wants to go AC. Yeah, he wants Ooh. to go AC. But he signed an extension on the, well, it was an automatic clause in the contract to get the one-year extension, but a couple million and I think he'll be off as long as Chelsea can get who they want. So we need a striker 100% you can see it from chelsea's conversion rate Jorginho finishing top scorer in the premier league for chelsea there's so many right. reasons that point to why chelsea and roman abramovich wants haaland as well so and and apparently haaland is 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 okay to to, to chat with chelsea he's, he's he's interested um mm. and and Tuchel, you know he's Werner, havertz there's a lot of young guys from the bundesliga there um so so it makes sense as well for him so yeah i think chelsea just need to step on it because i think it's, it's becoming now who want who's more serious Chelsea for Haaland or or, or Man United for Sancho because I don't see them both leaving. Yeah, facts, absolute mm. facts, bro. Do you know what I mean? We'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. Mm. Like, what else have you got on for the day, anyway, bro? Um, gonna watch the games. <sighs> gonna see what's going on, what's cooking with these Euro games, and I might put out a video. I might put out a skit. Um, if something if something <laughs> comes to mind, if some something creative comes to mind, if something funny happens or something I can twist and use in a skit. I might put it out and then that'll be the double upload. But we've already put out, um, I did a stream earlier just chatting about all of the transfer news, talking about um, um, uh, look, um, the performance yesterday from Italy, um, from Phillips as well, Calvin Phillips, and just the different DMs that are on the market, Tushi um, at, at Monaco, um, Lucchetti uh, at for Italy. So loads of options that are not not just Declan Rice because I feel like our fan base in particular are infatuated with Declan Rice right now. But I spoke to an athletic reporter yesterday on on on, on my transfer show and he said that Chelsea are not are not likely to splash on a DM. You know what I mean? It's not mm-hmm. priority for them. So could be a cheaper one. Could be a cheaper one on the market. So we'll have to see. I hear that. Well guys mm-hmm. make sure you go over follow Matisse on YouTube. Um yeah, man, and just keep an eye on what he's doing, man, doing some great stuff. Obviously, the next stream here is at 4.30. The watch-along starts at 4.30 for the Belgium game and then 7.30 for the Dutch game. 
Mm. So big up everyone that's watching here on Twitch. Big up the mods as well for patterning up the thing. And obviously this will be uploaded later on on YouTube. So um, yeah, make sure you like and comment over there if you're joining late and you haven't seen the full thing, people. Big up yourselves. <laughs>